My name is Saraya Turk and today I'll be hosting a special interview for Forbes with Ms. Lana Khalaf, the country manager at Microsoft Qatar. Lana joined Microsoft in 2006 and has had extensive experience driving innovation across Qatar, supporting the government's visionary initiatives, promoting diversity and inclusion and enabling digital transformation across the region. Today, our conversation will cover the launch of Microsoft Azure cloud region in Qatar and how the data center will empower digital transformation across startups and SMEs and attract foreign investors to Qatar. We will also explore how the data center will set Qatar as a digital hub and define initiatives, promote sustainability and empower economic growth and development in the country. The Qatari government is really backing up the digital agenda, both in public and private sector. So Lana, how crucial do you think these initiatives are from the government to encourage a culture of transformation and resilience? Thank you. It's a pleasure to be with you today. Actually, Qatar forward-looking approach with Qatar National Vision 2030 and the country's aspiration speaks to the ideology of transformation by design and not by chance. From building the world-class infrastructure to enabling people and ecosystem to diversifying the economy and driving sustainability. It is critical to create, the, to create the right partnership between the public and the private sectors with technology at heart to drive the required transformation in order to thrive for the future with such unprecedented times. As such, as such we have actually partnered with the government and the state of Qatar to bring the Microsoft Hyperscale Cloud Data Center to Qatar, we actually call Azure Qatar, to contribute to this vision, accelerating digital transformation and innovation and transforming the country into a digital economy, attracting foreign investments and making Qatar a digital hub for the region and the world. Solana, can you give me some examples of how you collaborated with the government and helped to speed up the digital transformation uh, to achieve Qatar's vision? Uh, of course. So while countries were challenged during COVID, Actually, Qatar had the right foundation and demonstrated resiliency at all fronts, including leveraging the strategic partnership with Microsoft that supported the country to respond quickly from this pandemic and recover faster from the challenges. Collaborating with the government, where, for example, critical sectors and organizations in Qatar scaled to the, to the Microsoft Cloud to achieve agility, resilience, security, ensuring business continuity. More than 140,000 employees were enabled to work remotely and more than 400,000 students and teachers were enabled to learn online using Microsoft Teams. Health sector, for example, enabled the remote health doctors, emergency responders and caregiver, caregivers availing chatbots and citizen portals in just days. And of course, even SMEs were supported at such times, providing them in partnership with the government six months of free access to Office 365. And this all was only possible because Qatar was already on the digital transformation journey much prior to the pandemic, which has demonstrated its readiness and resiliency to deal with these challenges and reimagine the future. Thanks very much, Lana. And how do you um, see that the launch of the data center supported the Smart Qatar agenda and the digital transformation? So the Microsoft Cloud Data Center region in Qatar that we call Azure Qatar will accelerate the vision, the Qatar Vision 2030, from economic to social to human to environmental development and will deliver on the promise to transform Qatar into a sustainable smart nation competitive in the digital era. So according to a recent IDC study, the impact of the Microsoft Cloud investment in Qatar will actually, with the increased adoption of cloud services, driven by the ambitious digital transformation initiatives, will actually create around $3.14 billion opportunity for the ecosystem over the next five years, making a significant impact on GDP. It will also create more than 24,000 new jobs in Qatar by 2024, enabling the local ecosystem, people, and attracting partners and investments to Qatar. The country is heavily investing in mega projects across different sectors like the smart cities, TASMU, 
hosting FIFA World Cup in 2022, Tautin localization and digitization of oil and gas, and many others, in which the use of cloud and disruptive technology will be inevitable. Cloud will be a key enabler for such projects and initiatives. So for example, the Microsoft DC or Azure Qatar will enable and has enabled many of these initiatives. Utilizing the power of the Microsoft Cloud to provide the massive in infrastructure at peak times and the ability to increase and decrease IT resources as needed to meet the changing demands at any time. Of course, with no dependency on the hardware or storage, especially with the disruption caused by COVID. Using advanced cloud services like IoT, artificial intelligence, machine learning to enable innovation and transformation and ensuring sustainability. With Microsoft Cloud Services, because they are up to 93% more energy efficient and up to 98% more carbon efficient than any a traditional enterprise data center. Thank you, Lana. It's very impressive what the Qatari government is doing and the investment they're making to really develop um, the data center and, of course, the use of, of cloud software. You mentioned some sectors, but can you tell us a little bit more about what the key sectors are that, uh, in Qatar that you really believe are going to benefit from um, becoming a part of the Microsoft Azure region? We believe all sectors across all industries will actually benefit uh, from this Microsoft Cloud region in Qatar. And it will actually deliver unprecedented opportunity for all, from government to enterprises to startups to SMEs, to innovate in the cloud and drive their business forward. So organization and enterprises and developers will have access to the largest, the latest evergreen advanced set of cloud services in the region, including AI, machine learning, IoT, that will accelerate their digital transformation journey to better engage their customers, empower their employees, optimize operations and transform business models. It will also reduce costs by approximately 40% and will give them the ability to pay as they use instead of upfront investments. It will provide local data residency and enhance security posture. Microsoft spends around $1 billion every, every year on cybersecurity and has more than 90 certifications and the most comprehensive compliance portfolio of any other cloud provider. There's the breadth and depth of our cloud offerings coupled with an unmatched global ecosystem of hundreds of thousands of partners with more than 80,000 Microsoft partners around the world will help industries and organizations in Qatar move forward on a global scale. Yet, the value of the cloud goes beyond the economies of scale and cost and operational efficiencies. It is key to creating business resiliency and innovation. Thank you very much. And so, in your opinion, what do you think constitutes a successful cloud implementation that actually captures the full value of what you were speaking about early in your earlier question? So organizations that have adopted the cloud and artificial intelligence have actually managed to be more agile, resilient, and were able to transform their products and services very quickly. Take, uh, take faster decisions to lead and leapfrog in their industries. They are seeing the increased cost savings with a more productive and efficient organization. Over the past year, digital resiliency became more urgent than ever as organizations re rely more on digital technology to adapt and thrive from pan pandemic response to business recovery towards reimagining the way we will work and live post the pandemic. With the increased adoption of digital adoption, leaders should focus on, on capturing the value of data and ensuring they have the right security to fortify themselves. IDC estimates that by 2025, the world's data will grow to 175 trillion gigabytes. With all this data, the challenge organizations face is not just how to deal with the volume. It is finding ways to generate new customer value and better insights leveraging that data. That's how organizations become industry leaders. As such, Cloud provides opportunities for IT leaders to differentiate their services and to drive and monetize new business model, move from using the cloud to gain economies of scale to extracting insights and utilizing AI to empower innovation and create competitive ad advantage. So the true potential of AI and data analytics can be realized when deployed in the cloud. 
And AI is the greatest opportunity in today's economy with $15.7 trillion potential contribution to the global economy and 14% boost to the global GDP with 8.2% potential contribution to Qatar GDP by 2030 in specific. I just want to end here before I move to the, to the next question is that IT leaders will need to operate in an environment of uncertainty. So the adoption of cloud strategy and, and framework is crucial and critical with the cloud they trust. Cloud is not a switch of a button, it's a journey. So an, it's very important to focus on an implementation roadmap that includes assessment, migration, optimization, modernization to innovation with clear defined outcomes and value. Cloud will enable IT leaders to deliver immersive customer experiences, better insights, and new business models driving business innovation and growth. So we've heard a lot about organizations and obviously the benefit for them of adopting cloud and transforming digitally. But let's now focus on SMEs. So SMEs are an integral part and becoming more and more so of every economy. How important do you think it is for SMEs and startups to get on the transformation journey and to scale up their digital transformation to compete with evolving markets across the region? So small and medium enterprises uh, you refer to as SMEs can have a profound impact in ensuring economic growth contributing to GDP growth. Actually, SMEs represent around 90% of businesses and more than 50% of employment worldwide. So actually, SMEs contribute to up to 40% of the national uh, GDP in emerging economies. It is estimated that 600 million jobs will be needed by 2030 to absorb the growing global workforce, which makes SME development a high priority for many governments. Countries in the Middle East have increased their focus on entrepreneurship and startups in an effort to diversify economies and drive growth and innovation as you said, and Qatar is no exception. Qatar has become a promising launchpad for SMEs and startups. At Microsoft, we are committed to empowering the startups in Qatar and the SMEs by offering them the technology and resources to create novel solutions and scale their business in the cloud. We're also taking it one step further by creating business growth opportunities for them and utilizing cloud to remove barriers to entry, decreasing costs and enabling them to reach regional and global markets. In this regard, we are working very closely with different entities in Qatar, such as Fintech Hub, QDB, Tesmo, Uridu, Tautin, Nautica360, and many more to empower a diverse range of startups and SMEs and ISVs from Fintech to energy, to healthcare, to sports, to smart cities. Some very interesting work and developments in Qatar indeed. Um, so for the final question, how is Qatar reskilling or rather upskilling the current generation to meet and operate the cities of the future? Um, and how is Microsoft Azure going to be supporting these efforts by Qatar? Um, this is a very important question for, for me personally as well, because I really believe people are at the heart of any smart city or any vision, and it is in the heart of Qatar Vision 2030 and all our efforts uh, within the country. As the cloud accelerates the digital transformation, it will also drive new opportunities for the people in Qatar. As we have seen that the increase in demand of cloud services and the, it's expected to create, and Azure Qatar is expected to create more than 24,000 jobs over the next five years. With this growth in cloud adoption, we want to ensure the readiness of the workforce in Qatar by fully harnessing the power of the cloud. To this end, we are partnering with the government on a nationwide end-to-end -end initiative that aims to skill more than 50,000 people by 2025. With a totally new approach to skilling, moving from the traditional training courses to learning journeys, hands-on experience to certifications. We are true to our mission to empower every person in Qatar to achieve more. From students to job seekers, to developers, to IT professionals, to startups and partners with no one left behind. Expanding access to digital skills needed to drive a vibrant and diverse economy. Thank you very much for your time today, Lana. And that really, that last question brought this conversation to a close. Um, it was a very insightful discussion on, on the launch of Mar Microsoft Azure in Qatar. And of course, the data center and, and learning from you about how 
Qatar's plan and with Microsoft Azure alongside will really empower the digital transformation and support both SMEs, um, uh, MNCs and, and the startups in the region. So uh, thank you very much for the discussion today. And uh, we look forward to seeing the future developments in Qatar and the support and growth of its uh, stakeholders. Thank you very much.